All right, let's take a look at the next section, 5.1. We are on the sections, 5.1. We get into the trigonometry. Angles and radian measure. Well, First of all, let's take a look at some angles first. When we have a small angle, right, the angle is formed by two rays. Right? And let's say this is a data, and we call this angle acute angle. Whenever the angle is relatively small, what are we talking about? It's between zero and 90 degree. We call this an acute angle. When these two rays are perpendicular to each other, we call this the right angle. The data will be equals to 90 degree. And if these two rays are wide spread, the angles becomes like this. We call this the obtuse angle. when the data is between 90 degree and 180 degree. And if that way continue to make it like this, when these two rays are parallel to each other, and one go to the left and the other go to the right, the angle made by them. Now, we call this a strict angle. When we have a strict angle, the data will be equals to 180 degree. Okay. All right, now let's go back a little bit and let's talk about what would be the angle measurement. How do we get those degree and uh, uh, theta equals to 90 or 180? Let's see the angle measurement. Indeed, we will have the x-axis and y-axis. We take a look at the plane. we assume there will be a pole stuck from the positive x-axis. Let's call this the OP, center at the origin. And now I'm going to rotate this pole counterclockwise. Once I do that, then I would be able to generate an angle. Let's say the OP becomes like this. So this is OP now, or maybe I could say OP prime. And the pole OP or OP prime may with the positive x-axis is what we call the angle data. 
So at the very beginning, when the OP is on the positive x-axis, we have zero degree. And by the time when we rotate it, OP all the way to the positive y axis, then the data will become 90 degree. When the OP continue to rotate all the way to the negative x axis, that would become 180 degree. Continue to rotate all the way to the negative y axis, that would be 270 degree. And when it go back to the positive x axis, so that would be one full rotation, and that would be 360 degree. So indeed, at the very beginning, this is how we define. We define one full rotation would be equals to 360 degree. So one whole piece of pie, and we will chop this into 360 equal parts. And each part, we call this one degree. So far so good. Okay. Now, let's take a look at this. Okay. The angle, let's see if I could show you this. The angle in the standard procedure, uh, pro, uh, position, we have the x-axis and we have the y-axis. And then we will start with a positive x-axis. We make a pole OP and we are going to rotate this counterclockwise. And once the OP becomes this and the angle made by the OP and the positive x-axis is what we call the angle theta. Okay. And indeed, we call the OP the terminal sign. Right? So that probably is something new to you. Maybe you should put that down. OP is what we call the terminal sign. And the angle made by the terminal sign and the positive x-axis we call this the initial sign, and that is the angle theta. Okay. Super so good, right? Now let's take a look at an animation. At the very beginning, it's right over here. We have zero degree. And then we rotate this, we rotate this, rotate this, and then yes, the data is keep increasing. Now you see the OP is on the first quadrant, okay? and then keep going, keep going, keep going like this. And what would that become? 90 degrees. And if I continue, the OP continue to rotate counterclockwise, and then later on, when it hits the negative x-axis, it would become 180 degree. What do we call this 180 degree angle? Straight. Strict angle, right? And then it continue to go like this, continue to go like this, and then it would become 270 and continue one full rotation. So what would be the degree? It would be 360 degree, right? It's over here. 360 degree. All right, so far so good. Right? Okay, so let's go back here. Let's get back over here. So we have one full rotation and we will chop this into 360 equal parts. Each part is what we call one degree. Now let's take a look at another type of measurement called the radian. Radian 
versus the degree. At the very beginning, we always talk about the degree because it's easier to understand. We have a big piece of pie and we chop this into 360 equal parts. But in the higher level, very often we talk about the radian. What is a radian? Well, one full rotation in radians, we will have two pi. Now, when we talk about the degree, we either write it down or we put the little circle on the um, exponent spot on the superscript. And that would understand as 360 degree, something degree. When we have radian, you actually don't need to write any unit. It's assumed to be a radian. So whenever you don't see any unit, it's indeed talking about radian. So you got to be extremely careful, right? Sometimes people say, okay, the angle A is equal to 45. You just put down 45, that is indeed wrong. If you want to say 45 degree, you must put 45 and then put a little circle on the exponent spot to tell clearly, otherwise, you are actually talking about 45 radian. Yes, question? So if you're asking, still what you're saying is angle, if you're asking for the angle measure, then you do write it like for that. One full rotation is 360. And when you're talking about radian, radian, that's what a full radian is 2 pi. Is two pi. It's 2 pi radian. It's a two different type of measurement. This is like inches and centimeter, right? We have a different kind of measurement to talk about the length. And now we have a two different kind of measurement to measure an angle. So one full rotation is actually two pi radian. So what's that mean? Two pi radian, you see I put that in the parenthesis, we don't have to write that, is actually equivalent to 360 degrees. Now for the degrees, I need to write it down, right? Or I put a little circle on the exponent spot. So if 2 pi radian is equal to 360 degree, so that means pi radian is equivalent to how many degrees? 180 degree. We divide both sides by two, right? So in a simple form, we would write pi is equivalent to 180 degree. Now, so be careful. We are talking about the angle measurement. So the pi is equivalent to 180 degree. So indeed, we have a hidden things. Is pi, pi what? Radian is equals to 180 degree. We are talking about the angle measurement. Let's take a look at the conversion between radian and degree. And the key is to multiply by pi over 180 degree or 180 degree over pi. Now, since pi is equals to 180 degree, so what is pi over 180 degree? One. What is 180 degree over pi? It's also one. So it justify for us to multiply something by pi over 180 degree or 180 degree over pi because it won't change the value. Right? Anything times one 
is equals to anything itself. So let's say if I want to convert 4 over 3 pi into degree, then what should I do? Well, I have 4 over 3 pi, that is of course in radian. I want to turn it into degree, so I'm going to multiply by 180 degree over pi. And then the pi will cancel out. Right? So indeed, the pi radian will cancel out. So now you have the unit degree. 4 over 3 times 180 degree. What would that become? Well, let's reduce that first. 3 go into 3 one times. 3 go into 180. How many times? 60 times. And now 4 times 60. So that would give you 240 degree. How about I want to convert 11 over 6 pi into degree. So we got the 11 over 6 pi. I multiply by what? 180 degree over pi. Could that be pi over 180 degree? Now, if I multiply pi over 180 degree, well, it's not wrong. But if you do that, would you be able to convert this into degree? The answer would be no. Think about the unit. You have pi radian times pi radian over degree. Would you be able to cancel out the radian? You cannot. So you have to put the radian somewhere in the denominator so that you can cancel out the radian. So now the pi cancel out. Okay. And then 6 go into 180 30 times. Okay. Now what is the units now? It's degree. Right? We have to degree on the top, on the numerator. And now you got the 11 times 30, but we will get 330 degree. Now make sure you understand now, you know, you must put down the little circle. It's a degree. You need to put down the unit, right? Just like, you know, you have to tell people, um, you know, let, let, let's go out for drinks. You know, I'm rich. You know, I have 100, you know. And then by the time, you know, we need to pay the bill, I take out 100 penny. You're not happy, right? Yes, I'm not lying, you know, but I got 100 penny. And then, okay, I, I don't have enough. Can you pay for me? Right? Unit is absolutely important, especially when now we are talking about two different kinds. Make sure you make it clear, right? It's not 180 over pi. It's 180 degree over pi. Yes. How do we get 330? 11 times 30. It would be 330. You have an 11 left on the numerator, right? You have 30 left on the numerator. So 11 times 30 would be 330. Let's take a look at another kind. If I want to convert 270 degree into radian. So it's the other way around. So what should I do? I have 270 degree multiply pi over 180. Is that what you said? Not quite. 
180 degree don't omit that important unit so we have a degree on the top we have a degree in the bottom and now the degree will be cancelled out so we can there's no more degree and now continue to reduce well maybe divide both top and bottom by 10 first so I can cut off this zero 27 over 18 what can go into both three can go into both but there's a little bit more beside three what else oh, let's try three all right three go into six six time three go into 27 nine times nine over six we can further reduce that three can go into both so i have two in the bottom and i have three on the top if at the beginning you see nine as their greatest common factor that would be faster so what do i have left on the top three pi over in the bottom two do i need to write down radian no need because it's assumed when you don't see the unit it's assumed to be radian right they are equivalent you could say 3 over 2 pi or 3 pi over 2 they are equivalent they are the same thing okay let's see another one can I convert 150 degree into radian? So I got the 150 degree multiply, multiply by what? Pi over 180 degree. So now the degree on the top and the degree in the bottom will cancel out. I got 150 divided by 180. So what can go into both? Well, 10, definitely. So I cut off the zero first, right? So it becomes 15 over 18. What can go into both? Three, okay, three go into 15, how many times? Five times. Three go into 18, how many times? six times so what would be the answer five pi over six or you could say five over six pi right both of them are legitimate answer right, right? both of them are good right? either way you can write it but at the same time you need to understand that they are the same so if someone for whatever reason, you need to write it in the other form that is absolutely okay with you. All right, now let's go back a little bit over here. And we know that now pi is equal to 180 or 2 pi is equal to 360. So at the very beginning, if we put that in the radian, we will have zero radian. And then after one full rotation, it would become 2 pi. Right? How about when we have a strict angle, 180 degree? What would that be in radian? It would be pi. How about 90 degree? It would be half pi. It would be probably easier for you to look at that and think about, hey, 90 degree is actually half of the strict angle. So that is indeed pi over 2. We don't have to do the conversion and let's have 90 degree times pi over 180 degree like that. How about 270 degree? What would that be in radian? Now we can think about 90 degree is half pi. Another 90 degree is 2 pi over 2. Another 90 degree, so what would that be? 
3 pi over 2. We just did a little while ago to do the conversion, isn't it? Right? We have half pi here. We have 2 half pi. We have 3 half pi. Or when we have full rotation, you could think about 4 half pi. 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. All right, now let's have some fun. Let's try this out. Let's convert pi over 3 into degree. Let's convert negative 5 pi over 3 into degree. Let's convert 1 radian into degree. And the question are nice. They put the radian in parentheses. Indeed, they don't even need to. They could just say convert 1 into degree. If you don't see the unit, that means it is assumed to be radian. And now convert 30 degree into radian. And then convert 90 degree into radian. One more. Let's convert negative 135 degree into radian. 